What's up, everybody? My name's Parasite. Welcome back to the Jose Mourinho Challenge with Chelsea. Today, we are in the Europa League semifinal, and today we'll be playing both legs against Bayer Leverkusen. We have played three games since the last episode where we beat Atletico Madrid to get to this stage. First off, we took on Sheffield United, and we won 2-1 away from home. Might not look like the most convincing victory, but it was a pretty dominant performance, and Cassie missed a penalty, because of course he did. Not like he has 18 penalty taking or something. He's taken two penalties for us, and he's missed them both. So he's never taking a penalty for me as long as I live. Uh, next up, a couple of results that were very good. That The first one was very surprising because we beat Manchester City 5-0. And it wasn't like we lucked out a 5-0 victory and they deserved more. We demolished them. We absolutely demolished them. And they are a good team still, even if they're not in the best spot in the Premier League. But Bruno Thiago got a hat trick and Kai Havertz got a couple goals, both of them getting 10 ratings. And... Like I said, look at the match stats. They had no shots on target. 0.39 XG. We demolished them. We demolished Manchester City. And it felt good, but it was definitely surprising. I definitely didn't expect that. But then we kept the good form going with a big win against Southampton as well. Another decent side, even though they are having a little bit of a lull this season after finishing the Champions League spots last year. But away from home, we beat them 4-0. Bruno Thiago, another hat trick. He gets back-to-back -back hat tricks. Betty Schiele getting the fourth goal. But another really good performance. Three games, three really good performances. And so in the Premier League, we currently sit top. Two points clear of Liverpool, who lost to Tottenham 4-1, to one, which gave us the ability to go on top of them and take this advantage and have everything in our hands to possibly win the Premier League. But we are also guaranteed a Champions League spot for next season. That was my minimum aim for this season, and we are going to do even better than that. We are guaranteed to finish top three, something this Chelsea team has not done in this save we look at the premier league in the past seasons last year obviously our first season here partial of the season we finished fifth which was tied for their second best ever finish in this save year before that eighth year before that fifth they love a fifth place finish year for that like i said they love fifth place finish uh the year before that sixth and then the last year that they well fifth again okay they just they love a freaking fifth place finish they are fifth place arsenal basically but the year before that was the last year they'd been in the top four, and they finished fourth in 2023-2024. The only season in this save where they qualified for the Champions League through the league. So before that, they finished seventh, and in the first season, they finished fifth. Of course they did. So this is going to be the best season Chelsea has ever had in this save, no matter what happens in the rest of the season. But the Premier League is not our worry today. It is the Europa League, another competition that I really want to win. And I think we're in a decent position to be able to actually win it. We are taking on Leverkusen, and the other tie is Feyenoord versus Rangers. So you got to feel like if we get past Leverkusen, we should be winning this competition. But of course, anything can happen in a one-off European final. Well, the team we're taking on today, Leverkusen, are not having the best season in the Bundesliga. They currently sit eighth outside of all Europa League spots or European spots in general. So they're not having a great season, but you can see it one of two ways. Either they're not going to be good because they've not been good in the Bundesliga, or... They're going to realize this is their only chance of getting Champions League football and might be one of their better chances of getting European football in general. And so they're going to go all out to win this competition. But I still think we still should be favorites. We are also facing a few former players from Sporting. Players that we have sold to them and the new manager has sold to them. Starting off with probably the best player they got from Sporting, Zakaria Saki. The center back, the Dutch center back that I actually signed for 750k from Willem Twy. And we sold on, they were sold on to Leverkusen for 46 and a half million, which is some good profit. But he's actually not too bad. Like, I considered signing him earlier, but I kind of didn't because I wasn't sure he's really going to develop because he hadn't developed in like three years. But apparently, getting first team football at Leverkusen, even if they haven't been very good, has really helped his growth because he looks pretty solid right now as a 20 year old center back. But they've even got some more former sporting players. Starting off with Luis Candelo, a player you might not really remember, but he was a youngster at the team. Never really made the first team. Because I never really saw a good position for him. Like, he's too short to be a center back. He doesn't have much enough tacking ability to be a right back for me. His best position is probably defensive mid, which is where he's playing for, Le for Leverkusen. And he's a regular starter for them. But we had other players in that position. He never really would have made it in our team at sporting. But he's made it at uh, Leverkusen. We'll be taking him on today. They've got a four, few other former players, including one that I almost signed, and that is Randall Wallace, the Costa Rican midfielder. Eventually went to Juventus, I believe. He did go to Juventus, and then Leverkusen bought him for $27.5 uh, And then other than that, they've got, like I said, three more former players, starting with Simao Suarez, who we sold to him, a center back that just was 
just going to be like a fourth or fifth choice for us at Sporting. And we got 53 million for him. That might be some of the best business we have done at Sporting because he's barely played for Leverkusen. In the Bundesliga, he's made five appearances. So 53 million, not very well spent. Uh, the other former Sporting players they have are Adelson Suarez, who we sold, but not to Leverkusen. But they have bought him. He's he's okay. Again, not played a whole lot. We sold him to Mines for four and a half. Then Leverkusen bought him for seven. Not too worried about Adelson Suarez coming back to bite us. And then one more former player, I believe, and that is a player you probably don't remember. Santos, a young midfielder, slow winger, whatever you want to call him, that we signed from Brazil that just never really cut it. And he was eventually sold on to Leverkusen for $23 million by the current manager. I mean, I don't think he's ever really going to develop. He's 22 years old, and he's only a two-star player. He's got good passing, good technique, just not a lot as a player. But he's played a decent amount for Leverkusen and not had the best performances but outside of those guys, they don't have a whole lot of talent. Like, we have to feel pretty confident. Some of their best players are probably Florian Verts. Obviously, he starts there. He's a very good attacking midfielder. I would say he's their best player. Uh, they've got Pole, who is a Spanish winger that I considered signing at one point. He's a very good player as well. The Spanish uh, former Barcelona youngster. And then the rest of their team, I mean, it's not great. Yan Kuto, a right back, is a decent right back option. Uh, Julian Alvarez, a decent striker. But you can see by league position, they're not having the best of seasons. Gabriel Vidovic, another former Bayern youngster that's actually pretty dang good. Outside of that, not a lot of talent. A former Chelsea youngster, Ian Matson, who's been their left back this season, but he's got a three-month injury, so he's not going to be playing today. But yeah, I feel like we have to be confident. We are definitely a better squad, but you never know what could happen in a European knockout. But because of that, no matter their form or the ability of their players, I'm going... Full strength for this. I'm not going to take them lightly. So up top, we've got Bruno Thiago. We've got Jeremy Pino and Havertz, who've been playing very well recently, especially Havertz. He's had some good form. In the midfield, we're going with Mariba and Mount, both playing pretty well. Gavi's actually stepped up and played decently well as well. So it was kind of tough to decide between Gavi, Mariba, and Mount, but I feel like Mariba and Mount has been a little bit more consistent. Kamavinga as a holding midfielder. He's been very good. And then Ruggeri, Jimmy Wong starts because Reese James is not quite back from the injury he suffered. In the middle of last episode, he's got three more days back, but he's good enough to be on the bench. He has passed his fitness test, so if we need him, he can come in because I don't fully trust Jimmy Wong. Our center back pairing is what you'd expect, Fatty Shelly and Cerezo, and then obviously Hirazo and Net. We are playing our higher tempo style. It's been playing very well for us recently. We played it in the last two matches that we won a combined 9-0. So I think it's probably a decent idea to trust it today. What's the mood in the dressing room at the moment? They're a confident bunch. They believe in themselves, and that's always nice to see. As the leading scorers in the Europa League, are you looking forward to another positive match in front of goal? Goals win matches, plain and simple. It's our job to put the ball in the back of the net, and that's what we want to do. Can you talk a little bit about how Valentin Cerezo has been playing as a ball-playing defender? First and foremost, he's done his defensive job very well this season. But I want everyone on this team to be involved in attacking play. And that includes our center backs and Valentin Cerezo. He's done a good job of that all season long. First half of the match is six and a half minutes in. Not much has happened so far. We've yet to have a shot and they've yet to have a shot on target. But now we're looking to attack. Jimmy Wong's going to be on the ball. He's going to find Cerezo. Going to go back to Camavinga. Back to Jimmy Wong. Kind of out of position here from this throw in. We're going to go back to the goalkeeper Cerezo. And now everyone should be able to get back in their positions. He's going to go for a long ball to Thiago who wins it and eventually falls to Ruggeri. He looks for a ball into Havertz. I don't know if he's onside, but it's not going to matter anyways because he couldn't even put it on target. Not a great start so far. We are still yet to have a shot on target. I really expected more coming off of two thrashings in our last two matches against Man City and uh, Southampton. But we are looking to attack now, looking to build from the back. Valentin Cerezo on the ball. He's going to find Jimmy Wong into Kai Havertz. He's going to look for a ball to Jeremy Pino, who's going to pick it up, and he's going to have a chance here. He's going to look for Thiago, and at least he puts it on target. But it's a good save from their goalkeeper, and he keeps it out. 39 minutes in. This might be one of the last highlights of the first half, and there's still only been one shot on target. Jimmy Wong's going to go back to Camavinga. I thought we'd have a lot more attacking input in this game, but we've not really done much. They're going to win this ball and look to go on and attack themselves. We haven't really seen them attack us, but now they're going to. Julian Alvarez playing on the wing. He's going to put a ball into the back post, and of course... Their first shot on target is going to be in the back of the net because what else would you expect? It's 1-0 Leverkusen. What an awful start for us. A pretty awful first half. Only two shots on target in the entire half, one for each team. But of course, theirs went in. Ours didn't. That's just how it happens. But for how we've been playing recently, 
We have been awful today. What was that? Get your acts together and start playing like the favorites we're supposed to be. You're playing like it's a friendly out there. Not a match to get to a European final. I've seen no desire, no effort from anyone on that pitch. And that is unacceptable. 56th minute. We've got our first high of the second half. We better be a lot better this half because that was the worst first half of football I've seen from this team in a long while. They were just atrocious. We are going to win this ball. Reese James has come on the pitch because, like I feared, Jimmy Wong has been awful. So Reese James has come on. He's playing in a more attacking role. We got to do something here. We have just shown absolutely nothing. Jorgensen on the ball. We're going to go back to Zakaria Saki. We are pressuring him. We are going to maybe win this back. We do. Ruggeri heads down to Jeremy Pino. He's going for a ball over the top to Kai Havertz. He's got Bruno Tiago in the middle if he can find him. And he does. And Bruno Tiago finds the back of the net. About time. Finally, a little bit of quality. A very good crossfield ball to Havertz. And then he made the right decision. Crossing it to Bruno Tiago. And if he would have missed that, I would have had a lot of concerns. Because he's coming off of back-to-back -back hat tricks. And that was a tap-in. We're going to have a kickoff highlight. I don't know if I like that or not. We did just score, but it feels like they might just score right back. We've seen it happen before. Jorgensen on the ball is going to go back to Viati. Into Vidovic. He's going to look for the ball to Diaby. We should win this if Reese James does. He's going to look for a ball over the top for Thiago. I don't think he's going to get there. He, I mean, he kind of does, but he just heads it onto their goalkeeper. Is this highlight going to continue? They're going to roll it out. Looks like they're not ones to just kick it long, which is what I would prefer them to do. But sometimes we can create a chance here from them trying to build out from the back. Jorgensen on the ball is going to go back to Stanislaus. He's going to look for Jorgensen again. Eventually goes back to Saki. They've looked like they're, com they're very comfortable having their center backs on the ball. But Candelo, not a great ball there. And Reese James intercepts it. That, I don't even know who that was intended for. Kamavinga is going to find Havertz. Looking for a ball over top to Jeremy Pino. Down to Bruno Thiago. I don't, I don't know if Jeremy Pino was onside. First instinct was that he wouldn't, but wasn't. But it's very hard to tell from that angle. Obviously, I'd prefer him to be. And he isn't. That's kind of what I expected. Three minutes left of added time. This wouldn't be the worst result, but I definitely want a goal here. I want to win this leg. And we've made a few changes. About the 80th minute, I brought on Benjamin Sesko up top, moved to a 4-2-4. Kamavinga playing as more of a defensive midfielder, even though he does have that yellow. I wanted the defensive player more than maybe the work rate of Mason Mount. So we're going with Sesko up top. I was hoping he could make a difference in the air, maybe get some crosses into him. Nothing so far. We haven't seen a highlight since. But we have recently made a few more changes, started to hit early crosses. Again, trying to see if we can get balls into the six foot five monster that is Benjamin Sesco. We're distributing to Benjamin Sesco. But I'm not going too crazy. I'm only on positive, slightly more direct. I still don't want to concede here. 1 1 wouldn't be an awful result. But I do really want this second goal. We've got three minutes to do it. Hopefully we can. We'll see. I'm not really expecting much. 90th, 91st, 92nd. And it's going to be a 1 1 draw. We were pretty awful, so I think I'll take it. 14 shots, three on target. They weren't much better, but from how we've been playing recently, this is just not even close to acceptable. We had five half chances and one clear-cut chance, but only three shots on target and only one goal. This is one of the worst performances we've seen from our forwards here at Chelsea. That was not very good, but fortunately it was the away leg. We've still got a home leg ahead of us, and we still should be confident that we can get through that and get to this final. And also, Jimmy Wong probably won't be playing in that second leg. He was the worst player on the pitch in the first half. He played a 6.2 in one half of football. And then Reese James came on at halftime, and he ended the game with the best rating on the team while only playing 45 minutes. But before we get to that second leg against Leverkusen, we've got a match in between in the Premier League against Brighton. They are currently 19th, and we are at home, so it should be a cakewalk. But they're still fighting for their Premier League survival. And so if I know football manager at all, this is going to be a lot harder than it probably should be. All right, we got the win against Brighton. 3-1 win, and the performance for the most part was pretty solid. Sesco, Mount, and Mike Fromm with the goals. Now we get to see if we can make it to a Europa League final. If we can get past Leverkusen, and unless Rangers overturn a 3-0 deficit from the first leg in Rotterdam, we might be taking on Feyenoord in a Europa League final. But we can't get ahead of ourselves. We did not play well in that first leg against Leverkusen, and that's going to have to change if we're going to win this tie. Fortunately, we are at home, but I am going with a full-strength squad. Bruno Thiago up top, Pino and Havertz. Havertz been in tremendous form currently. Midfield, I'm going with Gavi and Mount this time. Moriba's going to drop out. He hasn't played particularly well, and he never really has played super well at that advanced playmaker role. And I feel like I really need to play Mount. He's been in pretty good form if he didn't play well against, the, against Leverkusen. 
Kevin is going to hold his spot, though. He's been very solid in defensive midfield. Kessie did just have a good game against Brighton, though. Back line is fully fit and ready. Ruggeri left back. Reese James comes back in at right back. Has to start Reese James. And then Batty Shelly and Cerezo in the center back. And Harazzo staying in net. On the bench, leaves Nielsen, who is pretty good against Brighton as well, as a backup right back slash center back. Greg Wilon, who's back from injury. Capable to come on and playing left back if we need him. In midfield, we've got Kessie, Mariba. Zvonarek can play there or the wings. And then we've got Sterling and Benjamin Sesko. And even with our performance in the last leg against Leverkusen, I still come into this match pretty confident. Even though we didn't play very well that last game, we did create plenty of chances. We had five half chances and one clear cut chance. Our forwards were just awful, but we know the quality they have. They've been pretty solid the entire season. So I have faith they'll bounce back this game. I think we need to show everyone that their recent praise is justified. Put on a real show out there. We weren't good enough in that last leg, but we all know it. But we also know that we are better than that. So go out there and prove it. First time of the match is 12 minutes in. We're currently the only team to have any shots. We've got two, and we've already got more shots on target than we did in the entire first leg. That's progress. And we're going to look to attack on the first highlight of the match. Reese James, starting this match, played really well in the last match after coming on as a sub. Havers gets played through. He's been our leading assister this season. He looks for Camavinga at the edge of the area. Not a natural goal scorer, but you wouldn't know it looking at that. That was a hell of a finish by Eduardo Camavinga. Second highlight is 32 minutes in. Now, we have the ball after winning it on the through ball. We have had a much better performance to start this game than we had in the last one. Good to see, too. I was a little bit worried after that first leg. Jeremy Pino gets played through by Gavi. He's going to go down this left-hand side. He's going to look for a ball in. Tutsi Bruno Thiago. He just puts it wide, though. A few minutes later, we've got another highlight. 36th minute. We're going to look to build from the back. Matty Shaleta Cerezo. Back to Hirazo. Is he going to go long? He is. Don't have many players that can win this. Havertz does have some size to him, though, and he does bring it down. And he eventually gets played through by Jeremy Pino. He's going to have to pull it back here to somebody. He's going for Jeremy Pino back. And if gun to my head, I'd say he was onside. I hope I'm right. It looked like it was good. But you never know. I really, really like to have this goal count. And it does. I feel like the last like five goals we've had to go to VAR have all been overturned. But this one is awarded. Kai Havertz. Pulling it back. Yeah, he's very, very onside. Yemi Pino. Goalkeeper probably should have done a little bit better there. But we're 36 minutes in, and now we've got a 2-0 lead. That is a night and day performance from the first leg. We have been so much better today. 12 shots, half of them on target. Again, I'd probably like to do a little bit better there. But you can't really complain. So we just had like 15 shots and one on target. It's improvement. And we've got two goals, and they've done basically nothing. So it's been a very good start to this game. First time of the second half is going to start with the Leverkusen on this throw-in. 51 minutes in. Find Florian Verts, who's probably their best player. He's going to go back to Randall Wallace. Indian Kutu playing as a left back this game, even though he's a natural right-footed right back. And Florian Verts goes for goal. He just barely puts it wide. I thought that was curling into the top corner. We've got a corner now, 55 minutes in. And Cerezo is going to head this to the back post, who Bruno Thiago puts it in the back of the net, and that is going to count. There is nothing wrong with that goal, and it is 3-0. That should be it. We've got a three-goal advantage. We're at home. Leverkusen still haven't had a shot on target. This has been a dominant performance. 68 minutes in, and in the rangers Feyenoord match, it is currently 2-0 to Rangers. So one more goal, and they have even the tie. I did not expect that. Ty Havertz is through on goal, but he puts this one wide. Can't even put it on target. Only three minutes of added time left, and we're going to get into a Europa League final. And currently, we would be taking on Feyenoord, but one more goal, and Rangers would bring it level. There's not much time left in that match. I'm pretty sure we started at the exact same time. So unless they score in stoppage time, it looks like we're going to be taking on Feyenoord in a Europa League final. And it's very well deserved. We have been dominant today. They still don't have a shot on target. And as we see this game out, one minute left, and we are in the Europa League final. And it looks like we're going to be taking on Feyenoord. Well done on reaching the Europa League final. How does it feel? It feels great. Players have been tremendous this season, and their hard work is paying off. Job's not done, though. We don't want to just get to this final. We want to win it. Really happy with that. I wish the team was a little bit more consistent, but I guess that adds to the drama. Kai Havertz gets man of the match. He has been absolutely tremendous this season. He was kind of up and down last year in the limited time we had with him. This year, he's been one of the best players on the team. He gets two assists today. He's been tremendous. We are going to be playing Feyenoord in the final, and it's going to take place at the Stade Roy Baduin, who is, which is the Belgian national team stadium in Brussels. That final and the finale of the Premier League are going to be in next episode. That's going to be a must watch. This is probably going to be the biggest episode of the series to date. We have a chance to win our second European final. 
in the Premier League. It's going to come down to first versus second in the last day of the season. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.